Hi, I'm Shubna Nika Taylor, owner of Coventry based Grassroots Esports Project and organisation, Coventry Crosshairs. I am a Women in Games ambassador. I'm also the curriculum lead for creative and digital at Coventry College. Now, I'm going to be exploring the notion of esports in education and how we can use esports to drive positive experiences through play in an educational setting. So before I go on, I'd like to just sort of explain what esports is. So um, esports is the industry for competitive gaming. So if you think about traditional sports but digital, the UK esports scene is actually growing at a faster rate than any other. So the introduction to esports curriculum supports the growth and the ability to educate people on the positive impact on young people and their community. So let's uh, begin this talk and I'd like to introduce the topics that I'm about to explore, which are the key priorities, core activities, challenges, and of course the impact that I have witnessed through this project. I have three key priorities when establishing an esports scene at Coventry College and in a wider setting, Coventry Crosshairs as an organisation. So there is a large fan base from young people regarding esports and there are opportunities to be involved in a range of ways. So with the large following of professional teams, players and streamers, there are key individuals in the industry that young people look up to but it is a tough industry to break into, just like any other. So Coventry Crosshairs work hard to create a safe environment for young people from diverse backgrounds. So following on from the young people as a priority, it's only natural that we create a sense of community, which is our next goal. So we aim to give young people the drive to represent comment your crosshairs and be proud of accomplishments by doing so. It is their organisation as much as it's mine and the management team. So the community is what drives us to do more and introduce exciting news and events. So as the organisation grows we can expand and create further opportunities for young people to participate and expand the horizon for them in their step forward to the world of work. The most amazing thing about esports is that you don't have to be amazing at games to get involved um, and that's the beauty of its inclusivity. It really does go to show that esports is not just about gaming but it's also about the ecosystem of the industry. So this ecosystem is well supported by an array of departments, which allows it to become a huge industry. So how does the Coventry Crosshairs support the ecosystem? Well, we have the players, the management team, the streamers and content creators, the community and the educators. So let's start by talking about the players. So this group is made up of young people who train and practice together. They develop numerous skills, including teamwork, communication and leadership. And then we have the management team. Now this group is predominantly made up of adults who oversee the organisation. However, there are also currently two young people who have shown leadership qualities and have been tasked with the running of the organisation to help support it and are quite involved in some of the decision making process. Then we have the streamer and content creators. So this group is made up of young people. Again, is led by one member of the management team. So content is created when new content is needed. Um, which is more often around match days. However, we do have someone that reaches out to our community on social media 
which tends to be on a daily basis. Then we have the community. Now, this group is the largest group and to a new organisation, it is the most important and valuable. They drive the stream chat, respond to and share social media feeds and post, mostly made up of young people. However, we have also attracted other businesses and educational institutions. Then we have the educators. So these are people who can guide the young people in their role and their place in the ecosystem. So these are made up of the management team, the lecturers on the esports course, owners of esports organisations and other professionals such as players and journalists. So esports is fairly new in the public eye, especially for its place in the educational world. With regards to this, grassroots or collegiate level teams often struggle with the subject specialism as outlined in the previous slide, there is an ecosystem, and some of which, without knowing, it kind of goes unnoticed. So at face value, esports is about gaming. And when you start up your own internal organisation, it's hard to be anything more than just a team of gamers. Let's look at the British Esports Championship, which is a UK national tournament consisting of schools and colleges the most successful teams within those are the teams with their own social media team, Twitch channel, coaches and team managers. So it's about bringing in that level of professionalism and providing that enriching experience for young people. Therefore, the tournament becomes something more than just the competition. In addition... The colleges um, are creating an esports scene on their premise with thousands of pounds being spent. Schools, colleges are not only competing in the tournament, but they're competing in the best esports room across the country. With that being said, start small, test the waters. You don't need to spend thousands on PCs to start your own organisation. Some games will run on regular classroom PCs. But there's also further cost and implications as some of these job roles offered to young people require them to put in so much time and time is money. So as Coventry Crosshairs is an external organisation to the college, it was up to the leaders to pay the young people on their own accord for large jobs such as key promotional items and long Twitch streams. This seems to be the norm across other grassroots organisations in the UK. So how do we make this happen when the stigma of games and the potential negative impact on young people exist? We have to start looking at games as a way forward, a way to learn and a way to problem solve. Gamification is a strategy that's globally used by educators yet still not the go-to in some institutes. Parents often question me on their child's future. Is it valid? Are there any jobs available? And so this is why Coventry Cross has developed job roles for young people to undertake as work experience. The impact is crucial to any project and despite the likely challenges that schools and colleges may face, by giving young people a role to play, they are naturally undertaking valuable work experience. Our young people have included their roles on their CVs, social media bio, and have achieved some more work experience with other organisations. The more experience under their belt, the higher chance of further opportunities. Coventry Crosshairs aims to provide that stepping stone into the industry by offering key real life esports experiences. So through the experiences, young people will obtain new skills and develop the skills they already have. Educators explore the ways in which esports may offer students learning opportunities, access to college and pathways into the industry. And games have been proven to show improvement in attention, focus, 
and reaction time, as well as the developing ability to self-motivate. Gamers are able to transfer the pro-social skills that they learn from multiplayer gameplay to peer and family relations, as well as improving social and emotional skills with the support of a team that they're a part of. So students are always encouraged to feed back to others about games that they've played, communicate well during the matches for maximum impact on the competition. They also developed critical responses to the games played and day-to-day activities. So esports and education encourages STEM skills to be explored. They're not just developing skills for the esports industry itself, but also skills required in the wider context of STEM. So these skills can be developed through activities such as games analysis, strategy development, the online content creation, more so than any other areas of STEM. Esports heightens the proficiency in technological skills through the understanding of equipment, gaming peripherals, media production, internet of things, networking and so much more. And inclusion plays a big part of that. So esports created a greater sense of inclusion to so many of my students by shifting the focus away from developing professional athletic skills to transferable skills in STEM. With many programmes offering scholarships, esports is moving towards a world where sports and esports are regarded the same level of talent. So in contrast to most professional sports, esports enables both male and female to compete together in the same tournament although male still outweighs the females in a professional tournament. The UK has the Women in Esports Games programmes, which is highly valuable and inspiring, particularly to young girls exploring their career options. There are also initiatives to work with disabled and neurodivergent individuals to support and improve accessibilities to esports and games which has been demonstrated in some UK schools. Above all, many young people have a sheer passion for games and esports and what's great about this industry is that young people are getting involved, they're playing an active role in an organisation whilst learning a multitude of transferable skills that's not only for esports but for other industries too. Now that concludes my talk about esports in education and how it can be beneficial for young people and thank you for giving me your time. I really hope this has been insightful and you feel that there is a place in education for esports. If you would like to collaborate or find out more or just have a chat you can contact us via our email or our twitter We also have a Twitch channel and you can see our previous videos or you can find us at Commentary Crosshairs website as well, which is www.commentarycrosshairs.com. Thank you and I hope to speak to you soon.